great message, a great talent. We sure appreciate all Jesse does, or Cross, or Runs, all those things. He even interprets Chinese. <laughs> uh, yard sale. Uh, we had someone, someone speaking Chinese, and we tried to get Jesse to interpret, but he said, no, I only do Spanish, so he's, he's a little limited. We had some fun stuff there. I also didn't try to share with everybody, but I... I shared with a couple people. I did sell somebody's bicycle that rode here. And I did that on accident, but fortunately, we caught it before the person made off with it, and I did give the money back. <laughs> we did have fun, though. Uh, it is Father's Day, and so I thought, you know, for Father's Day, I thought I get to do my favorite text. And my favorite text is in Luke chapter 15, so if you want to turn there, we're going to be going out of there. We've been talking about relationship, and we're going to kind of cap that off today, talking about relationship. And this is a story, we call it a, the prodigal <coughs> son, but maybe it would be better termed the loving father. And let's just forget about the son today. Uh, because really it's a picture of our heavenly father. And so we're going to read that first, and then we'll talk about some of the attributes there. Luke chapter 15, starting with verse 11, it says this, it says, Jesus continued, it says, there was a man who had two sons, and the younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, and he set off for a distant country, and there he squandered his wealth and wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and he hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. I'll set out and go back to my father. And I'll say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son and he threw his arms around him and he kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his fingers and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he's found. So they began to celebrate. We're going to stop right there for this morning. A lot of good attributes about the Father we can find in there. And I was teasing with Lisa earlier. We, when we go, we're going to Gleanings this week. When we go, there's always this water park that's right on the freeway. And as we get there, the kids know that we were planning on going to a water park. And I always tell them, hey, see that water park? See that? And all the kids that have never been, yeah, yeah. I said, we're not going there. <coughs> it's, a, it's another one. Uh, and, and so this morning, there's some good attributes in here. You know, the Father was patient. He let the son do what he wanted to do. But that's not where we're going this morning. Uh, he, he didn't make him do anything. He, he was waiting for him to come home. And that's a great attribute for a father. But that's not what we're going to look at today. And the father, you know, he loved this child very much. In fact, in the, the stories just previous to this, he talked about how he, he was like, we were like lost sheep. Remember, he says he searched, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't let go. He wouldn't just quit because he loved him so much, and he would rejoice in, in how much he valued that child, and, and, and how he said, this is my son, and we see that. But this morning, I'd like to look at the father in a little different light because the father did something in this passage that I just love. The father fixed it. The father made it right. The father restored things. And you know what I thought about dads? Dads are pretty good fixers, aren't they? And when you were a little kid, who'd you go to when you're 20? Dad. Oh, I, wanna, I, I remember going to Dad, and we'd have these airplanes, and he would somehow put a weight 
in the right place, and we'd get to fly. And then the wing would break off, and you know what he did? Get that tape out. So we get tape on. Pretty soon I had a plane that had, st had little repairs all over, weights on it, tape on it, and everything. But I would go ahead. Now, as I got a little bit older, <clears throat> Dad would help me do things like fix my bike. And I learned how to do it myself. He would show me how to turn a wrench. And he showed me how to change a spark plug. And, and you know I love motorcycles. I got my first motorcycle. I was dying to get a motorcycle. And I just would go through that thing. I would do everything I could to it. And, and Dad said, you know what? Uh, be careful when you take that spark plug out that you put it in straight. Guess what? <coughs> It'll go in there crooked. Yeah. <laughs> Once. <laughs> and, uh, and I did that. I put that spark plug in there sideways. Oh, man, here's this. I've been waiting forever to have this. But you know what Dad said? He said, uh, you know what? We can, we can fix it. We'll, we'll take it down to the shop. We'll put a thing in there. We'll redo it. And don't do that again. <laughs> I just remember, you know, that's, that's kind of how dads are. And still, even today, uh, Cummings, we, we put in a water system at their house. So they have ditch water, and we put in a big storage tank, and we're pumping water from it. And, and we were trying to get that thing going, and, and we could not get something. We got air in the line, and then we couldn't get the air out, and we had things happening. And, George uh, is a general contractor. He's there, and we're both working on this thing for two days. And you know who we asked? Dad, <laughs> what's wrong with this thing? And we had Dad sitting out there and giving us ideas, and, and uh, we, we have his ideas in place and things going. And you know, dads are just kind of good at fixing things, aren't they? And my dad was especially good with that. And I think about not just, not just physical things, uh, but my dad was great with, uh, with relationships, and he, he taught me a lot of things. He taught me, uh, the biggest thing, he taught me how to love him, his wife, and just watching, watching that relationship. And he just fixed some things and, and made, it, made it right. Uh, and I remember uh, one of my favorite memories, I've shared it before, though, it is uh, being sick. I remember we were on vacation one time, and I was, I don't know if I've ever been that sick before. I was so sick and just miserable. And I just remember, uh, you know, Dad holding me all night. And I remember being well into the night. You know, it had been hours, and I was miserable, miserable, miserable. And thinking, if I'm this miserable, how miserable must my dad be? He must be really bored sitting here holding me. He must be really tired of just sitting here. And yet, I remember thinking, he's just... He's just making it right. He's just taking care of me. He just wants to make sure that I'm okay. And uh, one of the things my dad does, you know, don't tell him, uh, but he, he does this, he'll just reach and put, put his hand on your thigh. And, just, and I told my kids, I do that to them all the time. I said, you know, it's my dad's fault. Because my dad does that to me all the time. He just reach over and just kind of pat me and just say, you know, just, I'm here. Just, and it's just kind of, restoring and keeping that relationship and we've been looking at relationships on Sunday this past few weeks and I thought well I'd really like to look at, at this father relationship and and to get really a picture of the father and how he fixes the relationship between us and so we're going to just throw ourselves out of this for a while and we're just going to look at the father and in this passage, in this text that we read this morning, it, we, we see this. The father did something that only the father could do. You see, the son, what did he do? The son sinned against him. The son hurt him. And the only one that could fix it was the father. There was a, a guy named King David. You remember him? And he had some sin in his life at one point. He committed adultery. He had a man killed. He committed murder. He'd done some awful things. The prayer that he prays in the book of Psalms of repentance, you know what he says? He says, God, I've sinned against you. Only you can make this right. I've, I've hurt some other people. I've done some things to other people, and, and that's wrong. He, he wasn't trying to, to get out of that, but he said, God, I've hurt you, and only you can make this right. And so you, we see in the story that the father 
had been hurt. Now the son had done some things to him. The son had disregarded the father's feelings, hadn't he? When he took off, was he thinking about the father at all? No. He said, I want to give me mine, give me what I got, I'm going to get it, and I'm going to get out of here, and I don't care about you. How do you think that made the father feel? His, he had just disregarded all his feelings. He didn't, he didn't care what the father thought. The son had just, he had hurt him. He had gone and he had wasted all the father's resources. All that the father gave him, all that the, the dad had given him, what, what did he do? He went out and he wasted it. Doesn't that bug you? When you say, boy, I gave you this. You had this opportunity and you blew it. And that's what the son of the father felt that. He knew that. He had been hurt. He had been, he had been not thought of. He had been left out. His, his resources had been, had been wasted. And the son had really cut off the relationship, hadn't he? He said, I'm going to go. I'm taking off. I don't care about you, and I'm just leaving. He ignored him. Think about how that made the father feel. He was hurt. All those things were against him. The father had every right to cut off his son, didn't he? His son had done everything wrong. The father had been wrong. And the son didn't have any right to the father's love, did he? He didn't have any right to it. Can we take just a little pause for right now before we go on and say, how about us today? How about you today? Have you disregarded the father's feelings? Have you said, I don't really care about him? I don't really care about you, God. Here's what I want. Have you wasted his resources? Have you wasted his time, his money? things that he's given you, the talents maybe? Have you just used them for yourself? Have you cut off maybe this relationship with him? Or maybe just neglected it? Well, it's easy for us to put ourselves in the son's shoes, isn't it? And we see that. Well, the son had no rights. You know, what we look today and we say, we have no rights. We don't deserve the father's love, do we? We don't deserve it. We know that we've, we've not been faithful. We've not done what we should have done. We've, we've what the Bible says, fallen short. Haven't we? we don't deserve the Father's love. It's a good thing that we're talking about the Father today and not us. Because the Father gave His love anyway, did he? The Father loved... Anyway, he did something that only the Father could do. He fixed it. He forgave. He made the relationship right. The Son couldn't do it. But it says in this passage, the Father was filled with compassion. He was filled with compassion. He loved and he forgave the Son as only he could do. The hired hands, they couldn't restore it. The, the people on the farm, the brothers, they couldn't do it. The father had been wronged, and the father was the one that reached out. The father is the one that can forgive. The son couldn't do it. I think about us today, you know what, we're, we're broken, aren't we? We fall short. I don't know about you, but I, I say, you know, I'm not quite where I want to be. Lord, I, I want to do better. He says, I'm the one that can fix it. I'm the one that can fix it. Your Father has forgiveness for you today. And I love this. He made sure that the Son knew he was forgiven, didn't he? He made sure that he knew he was forgiven. And I just have some good news for you this morning. I know sometimes it's a hard lesson. Sometimes it's a, he says, man, sometimes he's preaching right at me. I've got good news for you. 
The Father wants you to know that you're forgiven. He wants you to know that. He said, well, it's been, it's been pretty bad. He said, I want you to know that you are forgiven. As we read this passage, he says this. He says that the father went and he, and he put nice clothes on him. He put the robe on him. He says, put the robe on him and put the, put the ring on him and put the sandals on his feet. And, and that's, of course, representing that, hey, you're part of the family. You, you, this is the family ring. This is the sandals. The sandals are, are part. The family wears sandals. The servants don't have shoes. But you're not a servant. He says, I want to come back as a servant. He says, no, you're not a servant. You're part of my family. You're my son. And what does he go around? He says, my son has come home. And I want to identify him. I love, the, I love this, that, that he identifies him. When I was in school, I was on the wrestling team. Uh, I really liked sports. And so to be associated with sports, you know, as I, was, as I was younger, I thought the kids in high school that were on varsity and stuff, I thought they were just heroes. How could those, you know, man, if I could ever be a sports figure, uh, that would be so neat. So I really really, it was important to me. I, I really wanted to do that. When I was on the wrestling team, I thought that was the neatest thing in the world. And we did a special thing when we had a wrestling match on that day in school. We had red sweaters. V-neck, and it just said wrestling. And we got to wear those, and we, we had to wear those. I was like, oh really? We had to? Like, you could have stopped me from wearing that. It's like, ah. I, I, and you, you act like you didn't care, but inside I'm going like, can you see this red sweater? This means I'm on the wrestling team. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm identified with the wrestling team, and when I'm sitting in English class and we're talking about all the stories and we're doing all that stuff, I, I know that you see that after school, I'm going to be wrestling. Because it was important to me. I, I wanted that identity of being with the wrestling. And it's kind of funny that in this passage it talks about a ring. You know what I have on my class ring? A little picture of a wrestler because I want to be identified with I'm on the wrestling team I went to high school the only thing I cared about was I want you to know I was on the wrestling team and when I got those wrestling shoes you know those shoes you can't wear for anything else they're, they're only made for us man I, I love those things it's like because that means I'm on the wrestling team and I just I can kind of identify with this dad saying hey I want to deck you out I'm going to set you up so that everybody knows you're not just a servant you're my family that whenever they see you, they know you are a full son. You're not just kind of out there, you're my son. And I want you to know that. And I want you to feel that. And I want you to do it. And I love the, 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 the father going around, he's, he's saying what? This is my son. He was dead. And I just love that, that thought. He's you know, going around to people, hey, this is my son. I want you to know this is my son. He really, he really cared. He wanted to, everybody to know. In fact, I, it reminds me of, uh, I remember going to work with my dad, and my dad would introduce me to people, and he'd say, hey, hey, so-so, I want you to see, this is my son. I remember thinking, dad, you know, they don't care. But I remember noticing that dad cared. He wanted people to know, hey, this is my son. I want you to see that he's, he's mine. He's related to me. I want you to meet him. I want you to to get a chance to, to see him. And that's what this father's doing. What's he saying? He says, hey, this is my son. He was dead, but he's, he's back and he's alive. He's, he's identified with me. Can you take that in today and understand that the father says to you, this is my son. This is my daughter. You're my child today. But I identify with you. I want you to know that you're mine. He even talked to the cranky old brother. The brother was, was, remember, the brother was mad. He says, hey, I've been here working. I've been doing my thing. Your brothers don't tend to be nice to their brothers anyway. And he's going, not only do I not like him because he's a brother, but look what the jerk did. He did all his things. He, this brother has, he's, he's got no chance. And what does the dad do? It says that the dad goes and he pleads with his other son. Can't you see? This is my son. Can't you love him too? Can't you, can't you take him in too? Because he's my son who was lost and now he's found. The father made sure that son knew, hey, it's fixed. I've taken care of him. I've, I've taken care of him. I've forgiven 
You're not halfway. It's fully yours. You put a new robe on him. I, I think of my, my cousin. Uh, he got in a motorcycle accident when he was younger. He was, uh, his, his father was actually killed. And I remember he came home and he was wearing, I think, my dad's pants. I just remember thinking, you know, that's, that's, he just says, you know, let me take your, your rags that are all messed up and bloody and torn, he says, and I'm going to give you my clothes to wear. And the, the father said, let me put my robes on you. You, you came out of the fields and the pigs and the, uh, all that. He says, let me put my clothes on you and I'm going to restore you and I'm going to make it right. I'm going to make it right. Understand whatever you've done today, wherever you're at, you've blown it. He says, let me put my clothes on you. I don't want to make you a half child. I don't want to make you partially a He says, let me give you my righteousness, my clothes, Let's just call you son. Let's call you daughter. Because the father's fixed it. The father's done. He wants you to wear his robe today. And this father says, now that you're son, we go on. Our family goes on. Now you're, you're back in. The relationship is what? Continues. The relationship is fixed. And the relationship's going to go on. He's my son again. We move on. I, I can't help but think of Michelle's family and, and all that they've been through over these years. Uh, if you're not aware, with uh, Pastor Cummings and, and Marilyn, Pastor Cummings had a, a wife and early on she died of cancer. And he had three daughters. Uh, Marilyn had a husband and he died of cancer very early. Michelle was two. And she had three, three girls and a boy. And those two families came together in 1976. Um, one of the things I've always loved about the family is you don't know that there are two families that have become one because they're a family. They've been a family ever since they came together. And they don't call each other, this is my half-sister, this is my it's, this is my sister. This is my mom. This is Michelle's dad. We, we don't do any of that because he says, you know what? The relationship has been healed and it's going on. There were some tough times in the past. There were some things that were hard. But you know what? That's in the past. And God has restored them and has made this family a beautiful family. And so they go on in that relationship. And the father says, you know what? You're my son. You're my daughter. And now we go on. Now we continue on from here. We grow. Are you ready to walk on in that relationship today? Well, the, the really good news is that this message wasn't about you. It wasn't about... You know, how you can earn it or how you do a part of it. It wasn't saying this is how you need to respond. The, the good news is that the message was about, hey, you know what? The Father is just incredible. The Father loves you so much. And He wants to call you His own. He wants to bring you in. And He is the one who can fix everything. He's the one. The Father's done His part. So, Let's get back to our part for just a moment. What did the son do in this passage? Well, I, I see three things he did. One is, I love, I love the wording, it says this. It says, he came to his senses and he went back to the Father. Amen. So, what do we have to do this morning? Just get to our senses and say, hey, I can't do it. That's, that's what he, his, when it says it came to his senses, it was when he realized I can't do this on my own. I am gonna. I am eating pig food. You know, when I make the decisions, I'm eating pig food. When I try to, to get back on my own feet, it doesn't work. 
He says the first thing that the son did was he came to his senses and said, I need the Father. I need the Father. He came to his senses. He repented. The second thing he did is he went to the Father. He says, not, not just that I'm laying here in the pig goop, but I said, you know what? Here's what i got to do. I've got to go to the Father. I, I can't just think about it. I've got to head to him, and I've got to go to my Father. And then the third thing he did, he just accepted the Father's forgiveness, his love, his restoration, and his part as part of the family. So what's our role today? Well, we, we've heard about the Father. We know how wonderful He is. We know His, His part. <coughs> our part is come to our senses, go to the Father, and accept our place as His children. That's pretty good news. That's pretty good news. That says He's done the He's done. John three sixteen says, "For God so loved." He loved us so much that he would die on the cross for us. That if we would believe, we would accept it, that we would have life. That's good news. I'm, I'm excited about the Father. It's a great to have a good Father, isn't it? It's great to have. Him. Now we just have to do our little part. So we want to. I'd like to just encourage you today to think about that. Again, it's, it's relationships. Before we close, just on a little side note, if you'll allow me to, to go here for just a moment, because we are talking about this relationships, can I just encourage you today to, to fix relationships? This is a great day to do it. Just to, to maybe do a little repair work and just make sure that those are in place. There's, there's a lot of people in our lives and, and you don't have to do everything. It might just be a little hand on the thigh that just says, I'm, I'm here. It might just be a little, you know what, I'm sorry. Maybe I blew it. It might just be that. But that would just take care of some of those relationships and especially relationship with our Father. Say, Lord, I <coughs> I've, I've been wrong. Just help me Lord, to run to you. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes this morning? Lord Jesus, we're amazed at how wonderful you are. Lord, when we see how much you love us, it doesn't always make sense to us. Lord, it's hard for us to comprehend how much you care. Lord, I know I can't even put it in words, but I know how much you love me. I've seen it demonstrated. Lord, today we just thank you and we love you because you loved us. Thank you, Father. And now, because of your great love, we'd like to respond. Because you've paid the price. Because you've made the way. Lord, we'd just like to accept that. We'd like to be in your family. Lord, we'd like to be 100% children. Help us to understand that you've given us that. That it's your work. That it's your righteousness. That it's, you, it's what you did for us on the cross. <coughs> Thank you for that. Thank you for being our Father. Help us to respond your children. We ask in your name. Amen. We're going to sing that song one more time. <laughs>
I have a, a he knows my name. We'll sing that verse that says, I have a father. Would you stand with me as we just close this time out? If maybe the Lord's been speaking to you, um, I just encourage you to run to him today. And although it's not magic place, you know what? You might just want to head toward the front here and say, Lord, I'm just, I'm just coming home. I just want to come and meet you. I just recognize my need for you. I just need to meet with you today. And just head this. Let's just sing it to him this way. I have a fall.